Welcome, my dear students of class 12, to this English class with me, your tutor, Atsinio Sekose. Today's topic is A Voice for Freedom by Ellen Johnson Sirleaf, who is actually one of, uh, the first women African president. And uh, this is a speech when she was conferred or awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. We are going to take a look at what is Nobel Peace Prize first. Nobel Peace Prize was started in 1901 by Alfred Nobel and he is a social activist and contributed much in the peace movement. So this Nobel Peace Prize is uh, the recipients are selected by a five-member committee appointed by the Parliament of Norway and it is held annually in Oslo, that is the capital of Norway, and for five categories, that is peace, chemistry, physics, physiology or medicine, and literature. So this Nobel Peace Prize is an award for those people who has contributed, outstanding contribution in peace. So what we have here is a, a, joint, um, a joint award by not just Ellen Johnson Sirleaf, but also by two of them. In fact, two of them are from Liberia and one is from Yemen for their contribution in the work for peace. So we are going to find out a little bit more about what was their contribution. So recipient of Nobel Peace Prize 2011 was a joint reward for their, the committee said, for their non-violent struggle for the safety of women and for women's rights to full participation in peace building work. So this is a speech given by Ellen Johnson Sirleaf. And in our previous class, we have talked about voice. So a voice for freedom here is in the context of finding the courage to talk about or to work for the cause of peace, finding the courage to say no to injustice and so on. So this award was given to three women and it was a great celebration. Why? Because uh, even Ellen Johnson Sirleaf has also pointed out that it shows the linkage of these three women in their struggle. And to quote her, three women linked by their commitment to change and by their efforts to promote the rule of law and democracy in societies driven by conflict. So that was what she said and she also talked about that in her speech. Now remember, uh, Liberia and Yemen, these are countries which uh, are countries fighting against uh, around a time where there was a lot of political and social unrest. They were also trying to establish democracy or the principle of democracy. So th it is very Interesting to note that they were being recognized and awarded this Nobel Peace Prize. So Ellen Johnson Sirleaf, she is the Liberian president, Africa's first female president in 2005 after a long battle of civil war. So she had demonstrated passionate commitment, commitment to hard work, integrity and good governance. She fights for freedom, injustice and equality in Liberia and most of all she also emphasized a lot on education. So in other words she is one of the women advocate. Lima Roberta Bowie, a Liberian peace activist who helped bring an end to the second Liberian civil war in 2003. She was uh, able to successfully organize, in fact mobilize the women, uh, women folk even though they were uh, some of them were Christian and some of them were Muslim. They, she was able to mobilize them and held peaceful rallies and demonstrations. And uh, through these kind of activities, she was also able, in fact, she was a great force in the, uh, bringing an end to the civil war in Liberia. So uh, uh, Yemen has called her as, You are a peacemaker. You had the courage to mobilize the women of Liberia to take back their country and also redefined front line of a brutal civil conflict. In other words, she is one of those women who recognize the role of women in the peace uh, movement. And so that's why in the front line, even though women were, uh, women were able to also voice, in fact, fight for the uh, social injustices. Tawakul Karman, she is one of the Yemen recipients here, 
uh, a journalist of pro-democracy and protest for freedom of press, Yemeni uprising uh, is a part of Arab uprising and her people called her as the Iron Woman, the mother of revolution. Why? Because she, in, to quote Ellen Sirleaf, quote unquote, where they had no voice, you found your way to be heard. Yemen was at that point of time a, a totalitarian form of a government wherein the government exercised a lot of excessive control and power over the opposition parties and even the private and the public sector as well. So in that kind of a time, she was able to find the voice or fight for freedom of press. So that is why we find that these women are linked by this award or by this uh, being awarded this Nobel Peace Prize and that is the linkage that we see here. We will take a look at the speech now. The speech accept and uh, expresses, in her speech she expressed gratitude for being conferred and also dedicate it to uh, the women of Africa and women everywhere in the world who are facing the same struggle, that is, struggle for peace, justice and equality. And she also acknowledges, uh, in fact, acknowledged former peace recipients who are of Americans, African descendants, such as Nelson Mandela, Martin Luther King, Barack Obama, and so on. Now, uh, she also offered her sympathy on the tragic terror attack on 22nd July that year, 2011, that is, that was a terror attack by a lone wolf who, who, which was an attack against the government. And she also pointed out that how Norway, we, if you look at uh, the country Norway, you will find that it is one of the most peaceful country and how that's how it is always an exemplary country to the rest of the world to of her historic commitment to the values of openness, integrity and justice. In other words, the principle of uh, principles of democracy. So uh, she also offered her sympathy as well as acknowledges the fact that Norwegian people are very much committed to the values of openness and the like. The joint and uh, the joint award speak volume about the universality of our struggle. What kind of a struggle? Everyone across the globe are facing a lot of social injustice, be it in the uh, women's rights or child rights or education, social injustice and so on. So these are the common struggle that we share. And by acknowledging those women who, even though they went unrecognized, they fight silent battles. And even though they went unrecognized, the the author is also, in her speech, acknowledges those people who were uh, said to be forebears. In fact, some of the forebears of Nobel laureates, she said that they are inspirational to her, who challenged us to redouble our efforts in relentless pursuits of peace. So their struggle, even though it went unrecognized, it is always a challenge. Those people who are recognized are as well, uh, they provide inspiration to continue the work for peace. So she particularly mentioned the first African woman who was awarded this Nobel Peace Prize, that is Wangari Mathai, who, whose accomplishment was in the field of bringing peace and political, she's a political activist as well as an environmentalist. So by acknowledging, giving them this kind of Nobel Peace Prize is also acknowledging the fact that the struggle is real. She also emphasized her message, that is Wangari Mathai's message in 2004, Quote, unquote, those of us who have been privileged to receive education, skills and experiences and even power must be role models for the next generation of leadership. So by quoting this, uh, she is also emphasizing on the leadership qualities, qualities that by getting the privilege of education and skills, one must be a role model to the next generation. She emphasized on the need to represent and defend those people who were not as privileged as her or who were not able to get a platform like her to share and talk about struggles. So that's why she said that she, people like them, are also representatives or in other words, to carry the voice forward. Why? Why are they privileged? Because they are marked. These kind of privileges are marked with responsibilities because history will not judge them according to what they say on that day or on that platform when they were in power, but history would judge them by their legacy, that is deeds and visions that were ignited, work that, were, uh, that was started, initiated by them, that would reflect what they have done 
or their service to the society. And that itself, this legacy would be an inspiration for people to move forward. So she also acknowledges Tawakul, that is the other two recipients, her compatriots, and Lima for their efforts and success. In the following speech, we find that she is narrating about her journey to Oslo, that is her journey to becoming a, a, an awardee or a recipient of Nobel Peace Prize. She said that it can be uh, her journey. She, is, she mentioned that she's grateful, in fact, credited it to her parents, her grandparents, the people of Liberia, and also to the farmers and trade marketers. All these people who are illiterate and yet because they have worked so much and contributed their service to the community, she was able to stand in front of other people to talk about their struggle. So that's why she credited them. And she said that it has taught her th through service to mankind one is blessed. One gets fulfillment only when one is working or for uh, one offers your service to mankind or for that matter humanity and she also highlighted talked about her 1980 exile and imprisonment where she experienced the threat of the threat with rape so during that experience what happened is that she also recounted in a very positive way that she was blessed in other words she was helped by people of her captors as well and that is how she also brought out the theme of unity and compassion and uh, that her life was transformed completely. Why? Because she was given the privilege or the, uh, the, the opportunity to serve her country as the president. So that's how she also uh, recognizes and acknowledges her privilege and also shared about her, shared about her life's journey. She also highlight a lot of important issues and in the world, or we can say the madness in the world. You know, she took the opportunity of being not just this award, but addressing these core issues that everyone is facing. And she uh, gave the example, gave the example of Congo, Rwanda, where unprecedented until that point of time, it was not known cruelty directed towards women. And she also pointed, highlighted again about the, the international tribunals where uh, it, it data shows that rape was being used as a weapon of war. And that uh, when it comes to this declaration of universal humanity, it, it declared that cruelty towards women, uh, these kind of things, would be considered, in fact, is declared as inhuman and as a crime. And yet, this kind of cruelty towards women continued as revealed in the data, and it keeps on increasing women and girls, we can say. And that's why she also addressed the issue that these kind of things that is still happening in the world is incomprehensible. It cannot be understood. The price that women and girls and their ambitions they have to pay is through, is with, blood and tears, she said. The need to defend the rights of women is not only limited to the battleship. She also pointed out that the tool to fight or the tool to use in these kind of battles for women's rights is through education, that is equality in education. Now, she also highlighted a lot of important things in the 21st century, the challenges that we are facing, such as crimes against women, human trafficking, abuse, equality in leadership, and opportunity, equal opportunity in terms of gender. So these are some of the 21st century challenges. And she did not just say it, but she also uh, addresses, in fact, suggests certain solutions. So here we have a, a very positive outlook and she said that there are still good signs of hope. It is not all a sad picture because there is progress and change and progress and change such as international laws and awareness of human rights. In fact, we need to re look at these kind of things more in a more detailed manner. She also talked about democracies. Uh, democracies that are being established in even in remote land where they do not know of freedom or unaccustomed to freedom. So these are slowly, even though it is tentative, uh, tentative or temporary, we are also seeing progress. 
And how can these kind of solutions be brought about? How can we solve the ailments or the 21st challenges? She said that the solution or the advantage lies in the fact that we have today technology where we can see what is happening in the globe. And it can be used as a tool to spread peace, democracy, and bring social justice and fairness. So she is also addressing here the interconnectedness of uh, the humankind here. And she emphasize that technology should be used as a tool to create awareness, to talk about this kind of uh, struggles, the, the, this kind of awareness and so on. So across the globe, she also exhort, in other words, encourage. Across the globe, we hear that the voices is that of the phrase no more. And what kind of a no more? What are we saying no to? No to social injustice, no to war, no to violence and to promote peace. So she's, she exhorted the, the audience and in fact the people in general that we should learn to say no to all these kinds of things and find our voice to say, the courage to say no to social injustice. The, she also highlighted a little bit about the political struggles in Liberia and Yemen and others uh, and by addressing, by giving them this award, others will find meaning in newfound opportunities. Others will also be able to connect with the struggles or understand the struggles. So this is how she also brought about the theme of interconnectedness. She also talked about her governance and she finds that there is a great hunger. And what kind of a hunger is that? A hunger for change. So how can we bring about this kind of change? She also recognizes the, the importance of the role of young people, such as youth. In fact, she pointed out the youth unrest, that people, the youth, are uh, struggling. They want better education, skills and jobs. And they have this great passion and zest to contribute to the governance of the country, in fact, to help rebuild the country and so she recognizes those voices as well and she said that when when it comes to change she also foresee the difficulties that lies ahead but she quote Martin Luther King again and uh, quote unquote the arc of the moral universe is long but it bends towards justice this kind of fight fight for freedom finding your voice fighting against social injustice this kind of journey is very long but towards the end it always brings justice it is always moving forward to a better cause. So she also talked about here political struggle, how she was uh, faced with certain incidents and uh, how she was re-elected as the president and how she hoped to build a better foundation, to lay the foundation of democracy in her country. And she also uh, talked about the progress, that is, what kind of a progress? How can we bring about change and progress? Progress depends a lot on better and fair policies and programs that invest on people. It should look at, in fact, focus at the people. That's, that's the way to strengthen the democracy. We should be investing on the people. So she also recognizes the importance of the voice of the people, or we can say here, the public, and that policies and programs, awareness, all these kind of things should veer towards a fairer, equal policies and programs that invest, that focus on people. So how can these kind of things be brought about? By giving a grounded rules and equal universal rules. And she also highlighted about the democratic principles such as respect for opposition and the opposition's voice who brings accountability in the governance. So she also talked about these kind of voices that we should listen to. And these are democratic principles. These kind of things should be given equal voice and opportunity. So uh, she again gives us the example of Africa and uh, Middle East, the struggle for social justice that was happening and that was a difficult struggle. She also highlighted that. And she, by doing so, she also highlighted the fact that Across the globe, people are facing a lot of social injustice. People are suffering because of, the, because of the fact that they were being suppressed, because of the fact that they could not find their voice. And so that's why she said, find the voice for your freedom. Find the courage to talk about, to say no more, to say no to this kind of injustice and stand up through courage to speak up against such kind of oppressor. 
So in conclusion, she also talked about and again highlighted about the 63 years ago how United Nations General Assembly adopted the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, that is uh, an individual right, human universality, after the horrors of World War. After the horrors of World War, uh, it was declared that uh, Universal Declaration of Human Rights was being declared and yet after 63 years we are still fighting the cause, we are still struggling to uh, re-establish that. So that's why she uh, lay emphasis on the significance of that declaration, that is, it does not only apply to one single country, it does not only apply to a single person, it applies to all humankind across the globe and this kind of uh, declaration is uh, cannot be cancelled. So this, oh, the award or the decoration, as she has uh, stated, is a testament. It is a milestone. It is a great achievement to continue the profound service for peace and human dignity. And so by highlighting all those declarations and by acknowledging the fact that countries like Liberia and Yemen were being recognized in their fight for such kind of human rights, women rights, or we can also say child rights, or the uh, uh, fight against social injustice, fight against political injustice, all these kind of issues that the world is facing, a, a small country like even Yemen and being recognized is, uh, is like a beacon for those people who would continue the great fight for peace and human dignity. So the speech, to sum it up, the speech is an exhortation. Uh, uh, it is a speech to motivate, inspire to the, the, the people to find that voice, that voice, in other words, that courage to speak up against such kind of evils, to speak up against such kind of injustices that we face today in our world. So with that, we would be winding up today's class. Thank you all very much for joining me.